Good evening and welcome to our service of Compline on this Sunday, July 5th, the eve of the feast of Thomas Moore. I noticed on a Facebook post from a few years back that uh, I described Thomas Moore as it's complicated. And as Anglicans, it's complicated. Uh, he did much for the church and yet was martyred um, as, as, uh, in the turbulent times of the Reformation. And so we do remember him for the good works that he did and for um, one part of the church. He is a saint and within the Anglican world we see him uh, as a, uh, a devout follower of Jesus. And so we will uh, have readings and, and reflections based on that tonight. Uh, as it is Sunday, it is the day I normally share a book with you, show you something that I've been reading, and I've sort of done a quick rip through this book today. Um, it's entitled Come Back, The Comeback Effect, and as we recently had a course in this diocese on inviting people to church, uh, a course based out of Wycliffe College's Institute of Evangelism and the, the Diocese of Toronto, I was thinking about yeah, it's an old saying, um, Harold Percy, the founder of the Institute of Evangelism at Wycliffe, was talking about signs outside of churches and said, you might have a spectacular sign outside the building, but if you don't have something spectacular inside the building, what's the point? And it got me thinking about how now, as part of our protocols, we get everyone's information when they come to church, because in a month's time, if we have to track them down due to a COVID outbreak, we can track, be in touch with them. Uh, and that's an important part of the process. We see how there's a suddenly, after a month of no cases in PEI, there's now five cases uh, there. So we keep this, inf we have this information, we gather it. And what a wonderful thing we can do to use this information to be in touch with people, to, to follow up. And while we can't use some of our traditional ways to build community, we can use some alternate ways. And so I'm using this book as a reflection on that. So it's The Comeback Effect by Jason Young and Jonathan Malm, uh, which I'm sure is a IKEA furniture piece. Um, and I recommend it. I'll put it in the notes afterwards. I invite you to, uh, I'm David Lehman, by the way, Bishop of Caledonia, and I am on the traditional and unceded territory of the Shimshan people, for which I am most grateful. I invite you to join us in our time of prayer using the Book of Common Prayer on page 722. And as we are in God's presence, I invite you to take a moment to be still as we come to pray. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm we're going to use this evening is a portion of Psalm 119, found on page 496. Page 496, Psalm 119, part 21, verses 161 through 168. We shall say the psalm together. Princes have persecuted me without a cause but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I am as glad of thy word as one that findeth great spoil. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great is the peace that they have who love thy law, and nothing shall lead them astray. Lord, I have looked for thy saving health, 
and have done after thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and loved them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Gospel reading recommended for today is one that we used a couple days ago, so I'm going with the epistle that is recommended for the commemoration of Thomas Moore. So our reading comes from the first epistle of St. Peter, beginning in the, 13th chapter, uh, the, in the third chapter at the 13th verse. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if they do... But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that, when you are maligned, those who abuse you for good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our worship continues on page 723. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. We say together the Te Luctus Ante Terminum. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray, that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasize. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye, hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that asleep we may re uh, that. Uh, pardon me. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our ancestors, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. The top of page 726, we confess our sins against God and our neighbor as we say together. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from all evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. And the collect for commemoration of Thomas More. Almighty God, who strengthened Thomas More to be in office a king's good servant, and to be a conscience, and, and, but in conscience your servant first, Grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties to feel the grasp of your holy hand and to live by faith in your promise that you shall not let us be lost. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lighten our darkness. Oh, pardon me. It is the fifth. Visit, we beseech you, O Lord, this place, and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us in peace. And may thy blessing be upon us evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne. Illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness. And from the children of light banish the deeds of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we invite you to share either aloud or in your hearts or in the comments box those prayers that you have for this night that we may lay them before God, knowing that God will hold them for us through the night. We pray this night for all who suffer from the coronavirus, those who are in hospital thinking of the new cases in PEI, uh, for those who are suffering around the world, uh, think of those in already difficult situations like refugee camps that are now suffering we pray for the medical people who look after them and for the people who are needing other medical treatments, surgeries, procedures, and for all that needs to happen for them to stay safe and 
and for their health to increase and to be given the opportunity to be safe in that environment. And so we pray for all those in the medical world, both as patient and as, as healer. We pray this night, and about half hour ago, the alarms went off around Calgary about the tornadoes. And I saw a photo of a, uh, of a funnel cloud east of Calgary that a, a sibling shared with me. So we pray for those in that area with uh, that threat. We pray for those under flood warnings and evacuations in parts of uh, uh, Dawson Creek, in Prince George, and other parts of this province, for the threat of another flood in Peace River, for the flooding that's happened in Manitoba, um, and for all those who, for who this creates much anxiety as well. I'm praying for people's safety and knowing, having heard of a number of drownings this week for the families that um, are suffering that way. Pray for all who are in grief at this time. Praying for one of the people who was following us early on and whose family still follows us now and in their loss and in their bereavement at this time. We pray for all who cannot mourn in a traditional way and have uh, the public voice to their grief and we pray that they may find solace in the good news of Jesus Christ and that God promised us promised to us to be faithful especially in death and that there is good news to be found there even in the depths of pain. We pray for all who minister God's grace Thinking of the services that happened today, uh, those in person and those virtually uh, within this diocese and around the world. And for the Church of Christ being the body um, in a virtual and in a real way. And giving thanks to God that we may worship in the myriad of ways we have right now. And allowing us to give voice to our praise and our prayers. We pray for those who lead us in the government and in industry and in the church. We pray for those who minister to those on the margins of society. And we pray for all who this night are suffering. And we add the names of people that you've added to your prayers into our prayers. And I'll go back over that list later on and join with you in those prayers. Now we offer this intercession. Be mindful, O Lord, of thy people gathered before thee. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, anxiety, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us, and those that have desired us and worthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten do thou, O Lord, remember, for thou art the helper of the helpless, the saviour of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each one's need and hast heard the prayers, grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We offer up the end of this Sunday our thanksgivings for this day and for this past week. Uh, I am thankful for emergency warning systems that get people to safety now that, uh, that we have and for uh, the ability to communicate and text with family as, uh, as Twitter uh, lets you know of things going on. I give thanks for social media and the ability we have to worship in a variety of ways right now and to be the body of Christ together apart.
And I give thanks again for the clergy and for the lay leadership in this diocese and throughout the church that uh, makes this all possible at this time. And I invite you to add in your thanksgivings and your praises to God for this day, either aloud or in the comments box or in your heart. And we pray. O most merciful Father, we humbly thank thee for all thy gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of men and women, we praise and magnify thy holy name. But above all, we thank thee for our spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the bottom of page 727. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord only, that that make our that make us to us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us this night and indeed forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening. My apologies for all the lapses and such. I have a raging migraine going on right now, and it just doesn't want to let up. So my apologies. I'm hoping a good night's solid sleep will correct that for me. Um, so I, I appreciate your prayers uh, that might help me in my sleep this night, although that's normally not a problem for me. Um, tomorrow at 8 a.m., we uh, join Pastor Don at St. Mark's in Dawson Creek for morning prayer, uh, and you can find them on their Facebook page. Uh, during the day, from the Bulkley Valley Parish in Smithers, uh, Father Wilfred will uh, lead us in a devotional, and you can find that on their Facebook group. And at 12.15, from St. Andrew's Cathedral in Prince Rupert, the Dean will lead us in midday prayer. And you can find that on their Facebook group as well. I will be back tomorrow evening, God willing, at 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific on Facebook and Lord willing on Vimeo YouTube at 9.30 for, uh, to lead us in Compline again. I pray that you may have a most restful night and a good day tomorrow. Blessings, nighty-night.